Investors face some tough decisions when deciding how to invest the payouts received from things like inheritances and retirement schemes. Should one put the entire lump sum into the market at once or should they phase it in over a period of months? The topic has been the subject of academic study and Sean Latter from Questra Wealth joins us in studio to discuss the new findings. So you should be so lucky to get an enormous inheritance. What should you do with it, Sean? Yeah, I, I think the, the problem that most people face is they, they get this windfall. They're not too sure exactly what to do with it or how to deal with it. Um, and the question of going into the market is, is quite often a daunting one. Uh, I think another group of, of investors that perhaps sit in a very similar, if not even more uh, terrified situation, is those that have been sitting on the sidelines. We know that many, many uh, investors are still sitting in money market type instruments. Um, a year ago, they might have been saying, look, there's too much volatility, there's too much uncertainty. And now they're sitting back and going, oh, hang, have I missed out and is it not too expensive? So I've, I've found that there's more and more questions coming around the topic of phasing in. In other words, instead of putting in it all at once, do I say do it over a three month period, six month, 12 month, or even longer? Um, so, so those are the types of things that are coming up. And, and I think to deal with it, there is some research that's come out from not only a global perspective, but also a local one to kind of better understand what are the potential benefits and or pitfalls of taking, taking such an approach. And Sean, what are those, uh, we wanted to understand those findings because I mean, besides those two reasons we listed in the intro, there's a lot of, a lot of people selling businesses, yeah. are getting m massive lump sums. And uh, you know, if you, <laughs> if you manage to put your money in, uh, in March 2009, I mm. think, or actually a little bit before that in 2008, uh, you'd barely, you, you would have maybe just got back to where you were uh, pre the crash. So quite an important thing from an investor perspective is to think how to allow this money to get its market exposure. What's the sort of uh, research, what's the recommendation that's come from the research that you've looked at? I, th I think that the key findings in, in the research both, both globally and here really points to, to two factors and, and really it's around if we're going to make a financial decision, uh, what's the best financial decision and that sort of forks out in two further areas in terms of returns and risk. Um, and the others from a behavioral point of view. So, so from purely from a financial perspective, one has to look at it and say, is phasing in better? What we found on a global and local perspective is that only 33 in local terms or 38% in global terms. We are terms. isolating equities here in the discussion. We, we are isolating We are equities. isolating. So you've got, first of all, you've got to decide, are equities the way to go? And, and Once so you've done that, you've got to yes. decide how to deploy your money. Correct. And, and certainly, is, are equities going to make a key, key or core component of the portfolio? Um, so it's purely equities. Uh, what we found is that phasing in only 33 to 38% of the time allows you to be better off from a returns perspective, which means that overwhelmingly a lump sum from a returns perspective is going to be better for you. But that might be a very, very, very hard pill for many people to swallow, especially if they do see a crash shortly after investing their capital. It does sound a lot more risky. You know, we, we t sort of talk about uh, with unit trusts and, and exchange traded funds, ra RAND dollar averaging or RAND cost averaging as it's called, where you save a little bit of funds every month and then it, it smooths out any, any chinks in, in the sort of profile of the returns that you get. But, uh, you know, is that... If I if I take the example of a of a person who sold a business for a hundred million, mm -hmm. the, the research says that. But you, as a financial advisor, can you stomach that and and advising the client that with mm -hmm. the risk that he could take a substantial hit on his yeah. uh, on his money invested if if he gets the timing wrong? Well, yeah, I, th I think that's a, that's a reality that's that's out there. Um, the key for for me in, in the planning and the process that I take my clients through is how am I going to get you into a position where I give you the most likely chance of actually succeeding through this and one of the questions that we then have to ask ourselves within that is from a findings perspective it's all very well to say the lump sum on average is better but then we have to say well what if it does crash what is worst case scenario and what we found with phasing in is if we assume worst case uh, scenario you'd be five percent better off if you phased in versus if you took the average you'd be 1% worse off from a returns perspective. So there is very, very much around having a look at it and saying, from a returns perspective, if I'm looking for returns enhancement, lump sum is the way to go. If I'm looking at risk management, phasing in 
is going to really, really assist me there. Let's just go back to the time period over which you need to phase in because that's also critical in terms of the research. Absolutely. I think in terms of the research, what we find, the three-month story is, is, is null and void. It doesn't really make a difference. And what you find is over 12 months, the same applies. Okay, so what we're left with, in essence, is the six to 12-month period. And uh, what the, the findings have really found is that the, the, the nine-month hitting it straight, straight between uh, those two periods is the optimal um, time to, to, to look at it. Um, Simplify for me. I'm, I'm a little so slow one, today. One, one would have a look at it and say, from a phasing in perspective, today I've got this 100 million from the business. 33% of it in? I'm going to, no. I'm going to, the first month, put one ninth of it. The second month, See, I was way behind ninth. you. Yeah. All right. So, so as every month passes, you're going to feed one sort of fraction of that nine months uh, into the market. The key with this, however, is that you have to set it up in a way where your hands are almost taken out of the decision making. And that's very, very difficult. Because if you're going into phasing in in the first place, you're anticipating a knock in the market. And you're saying, what if this really, really happens? And if it really, really happens, phasing in is going to work incredibly well. But <laughs> if you've put the first amount in, and the market does take a crash, as you're anticipating from a phasing in perspective, chances are you're going to step back and say, that's it, I'm not going in anymore. And then you're going to lose the uptick of that market. So no, it becomes so a, it becomes required here, <laughs> Warren. So, so here's, the, here's the 100 million rand question, Sean. Yep. Uh, in the current environment, and I, I like to use, you know, you, you, you can't guess what's going to happen in the market, but you need to be aware of, of where the market is in terms of valuations. A lot of investment managers saying we're, we're, we're very top heavy at the moment in the South African market. You're the financial advisor. You've seen the research. You know, you know the domestic environment. What, do, what would you be advising your clients, or what are you advising your clients with, with regards to lump sums at the moment? Do you, do you fully buy the, the lump sum argument, or are you a little bit more cautious and, and blend the two approaches? Warren, well, I, th I think blending the two approaches is important. And, and again, it comes down to more from a behavioral point of view. I'd rather sit with somebody and work through a process of getting them into the market rather than having them sit out the market indefinitely. Um, so that's the first aspect. If we have a look at the current environment, uh, the other sort of research that, that wasn't as conclusive as, as what we would have imagined is if we then had to start looking at the, where the market was from a PE perspective. Um, and we know that, that PE ratios are, are beneficial, but they can be a little bit quick and dirty. Um, and what was found through that is if you're going to have a benefit from phasing in, it did start to tilt in your favor if we had from a local uh, perspective PE ratios of 16.5 and, and above, okay, where we know that we're not at those levels yet. Okay. Um, so certainly at the moment, it's, it's tipping in the favor of, of lump sum if you're looking purely for returns. If you want to risk manage, then absolutely phasing in becomes a very viable option.